This, this is the setup today, and I'm working on a track which is pretty tongue in cheek. Um, it's called Living on a Kitchen Island. I've told you all about it in an earlier talk through, so let's listen. There's your rhythm, there's your bass. Put a piano on it, there's piano, and the bass. The extra drums. If we go back and put the vocals come straight in, it's someone talking about. Uh, well, it's a rather psychedelic song in some ways, classic cleanness in some ways. She said, so when I finished the mescaline, I took a magic bus and ended up in India. For most of 69 India I lost my ego there I think I left it on a train yeah. Perhaps Or maybe I lent it to this guru Right, so you've already seen it Instead of putting a sitar straight in Which is 408 Which I, I did put one in I just wanted to, it, it, I'm breaking all the rules of show, don't tell. I'm actually thinking, end it, okay, we'll put a sitar in it. To make it a bit more sitar, like a... All the cliches, but that's not the main thing. The main thing that I think uh, symbolises the greatness of Indian music is the way they bend the string set, you know, string section, actual strings. They, they put those quarter tones in, which is why you get this kind of, um, let's see if I can find some strings for you. All right, strings, quickly. Uh, uh, string ensemble, that'll do. We bend that, shall we? <laughs> That's what you just heard, just a little bit of that, and you suggested it. So here's this um, rather disillusioned young person. She said, So when I finished the mescaline, I took a magic bus and ended up in India. Most of 69. Yeah, so we've done that. Um, I did have trouble with the lyrics, but in the end, um, I opted for the comedy vote, where uh, the person went through guest out therapy, primal scream, all the usual spiritual and psychological and psychiatric dilettantism until returning home and finding that she'd inherited some money, but now she was on a kitchen island, you know, mucking about with the kind of thing that people muck about with when they can't quite find themselves and have the luxury of not being able to find themselves. <laughs> I lost my ego there, I think I left it on a train, perhaps, or maybe I lent it to this guru back in the So this is how I carry on. I mean, I don't use the, you know, I don't actually use many samples as such, and nor do I use the screen a lot? I try and get performances all in one. So I'm actually recording on an eight track Porter studio using 1967 and 68 production methods. Once I've got to a certain critical amount of tracks I've used, I bounce down. I have to make that production decision there. We've got bass, we've got um, drums, we've got extra drums. Now I want to shake a tambourine, put a shaker on it as well. Well, Sonny Jim, you've just used up oh, five yeah, tracks. So you've got to be bounced all down to two. Everything on there is on two tracks, and that's a luxury. Now comes the bass. The piano to provide the western chords. Sissars. They're only in there for a bit, a reference, you know. Flutes. That all important happy flutes. See, I know my turf because I grew up with it. This was all the stuff that was being played to me in 1967 when I was 
uh, what, 15 or something? No, I, was, I wasn't as old as that. I was 13, 14. 15, 16, these were the things that I absorbed from what um, R&B and British pop musicians were beginning to discover, and I just had to do a crash course them. I didn't. As soon as I had the sounds at my disposal, I knew what to do. And so this was a snapshot of me putting a song together. It's the, maybe the last one on the album. I'm going to try and squeeze another one in. OK, this has been Martin Yule on a particularly sort of exhausted Wednesday morning. But I'm at work, so see you next time.